your, your top three? Ah, uh, it's hard to do, Nick. I'm, I'm, I've got a circle around Zoe Buckman here. She's got a PB of 8.52. She's been returning to form. Every time we've seen her race over the last six months, I feel like she's got... So you can see on the far side of the track, near gate Noosa, one, we're lined up. For second at the Noosa Bolt recently to Caitlin Adams, which was a strong run. I think Morty Skyring could be on the podium and she could easily win it. Nat Rule, she's got a 5K PB of 15.06. So if she's in form, also haven't seen her finish a race. I think he'll just tell me she... Um, DNF in a 3k recently so I think it depends on what shape some of these ladies are actually in today so it's going to be fascinating to see and that looks like Imogen Barrett out wide that's going to help with the pace so the pace will be on which is good I reckon the one two that we didn't mention Carly Thomas um, you know she's an absolute star over the 800 metres 159 so stepping up here um, if she finds a nice rhythm um, and again we, we know it's a night for on track stars and she's one of them Absolutely. She's uh, been running for the University of Washington and she has that NIL deal as well, saying that the NCAA has just brought in in the last six to 12 months or so. So a bit of a unique opportunity to, for her to be um, running in the on colours. And I mean, that 159 we talked about with that speed, Brady, she's come back, she came back from one of the more horrific leg breaks um, to come back in and run that sort of time. Obviously, she was a prodigious junior. Um, Washington served her really well over there, obviously. And now, yeah, as you said, she's in great shape and up a big distance here. But There'll be a plan here as well, I think, Nick. Like, we have four on Athletic Club members in the race, um, one of them being the pacemaker. This is going to be set up from the start. Jayla Hancock-Cameron as well. She could do anything. 9-11 recent at the New South Wales 3K. And ran very well in the uh, 1500 here last year at the Zad event. So. Yeah. So to read out the field from start to finish, the 14 women who have towed the line, we have Stella Radford from Victoria, Jodie McCann of Ireland, Carly Thomas from New South Wales, Bridget Dennehy from New Zealand, Brielle Erbacher from Queensland, Stephanie Kelly from the ACT, Rachel McCormack also from the ACT, Jayla Hancock-Cameron, New South Wales, Emma Hogan from Victoria, Laura Nagel from New Zealand, Zoe Buckman from ACT, Zoe Tolland from South Australia, Morty Skyring from Victoria, and Natalie Rule also from Victoria. So a truly diverse field here of international and interstate athletes and the women's 3K at the On Track Night, Melbourne. And Imogen Barrett had the pace and job, and I think it took her about uh, 100 metres then to figure out that she was in a 3K, not a 1500 or maybe an 800, because she was fairly humming around that first bend and then settled things back down. And it's the Irish woman that's decided to go with her, and of course she's one of the on athletes as well, Jodie McCann. And Jayla Hancock Cameron just slides in behind her. Carly Thomas is in the mix as well. And it was said at the start of the, um, start of the call, Zoe Buckman. Um, champion athlete and has proven herself in the years gone by, but unsure of her form currently. Wouldn't it be a story if she comes out and gets the win tonight? Yeah, of course. Olympic finalist over 1,500 metres, Commonwealth Games star as well. It's great to see her back. Um, so there's a bit of a gap out the head of the field between Barrett and the rest of them. You wonder what the instructions were on pacing, um, but she has well and truly strung out the field. Nat Rule Running in lane two, just picking off athletes one by one. Salah Radford is kind of in the mix there around the middle to front end of that field. She's run nine minutes before. She will be uh, in the mix in the closing stages, I would gather. But it is Jodie McCann who is chasing the fastest, the athlete from Ireland and the On Athletics Club. I reckon it's sub nine. Seven, she was 71-72 for that lap. Looks like she's sticking to the pace of the instructions. The group hasn't quite got on yet, but I think that's the instructions from the coach. So, look, Jodie McCann, the Irish woman there in second, she ran at a British Milers meet this year and ran 9.20-odd. Her PB is listed here as 9.15, which I think is probably what the sort of shape I think she thinks she's in. Stella Radford's in the middle of that group there. She's been in great form. She was second recently at our own Victorian Milers club meet over 3,000 metres. Phenomenally that night, beaten by a 12-year-old Sophie Hall, who we're going to be speaking <laughs> a lot more at these meetings in the years to come. Absolutely. And we see Zoe Buckman... Sliding in there behind Jodie McCann as the infield starts to fill up. We're talking about this party, party atmosphere all night and we do see the crowd start to fill Lakeside Stadium here on these on-track night. So it is McCann, Buckman, Skyring are your one, two, three. Behind the pacer, of course, Carly Thomas 
is in the mix, and that's all she has to be with until a couple of laps to go because we know that she's got that top-end speed to beat anyone in this field if she's then in the mix. Good pacing through in three minutes, zero seconds, point one. I was hard on Imogen early, but she pulled it back and got it together. So, look, the on-athletic group, though, as you mentioned, it's four, f three of the top four. Obviously, one of them's the pacemaker, but um, it's the uh, Irish woman representing on-athletic Europe. Behind them, Maori Skyring looking really good. Also. And I like we really have seen this team uh, team atmosphere tonight from the On Athletics Club with Imogen Barrett racing a 600 metres earlier on and then backing her up for a bit of a training session slash pacing job. Um, as we have said multiple times tonight, it's only December. It's still early in the season. So Imogen Barrett doing all she can to help out her teammates here as the lead or the placings really haven't changed uh, too much. As Stella Radford goes into lane two, and we said that she'd be a bit of a force. She's run nine minutes before, and she's making her way up the field. Zoe Buckman, she's got that real traditional short arm swing, <laughs> but little sort of pitter-patter feet, but it's so effective for her. As we said, she's got some impressive, impressive form over 1,500 at World Championship and Olympic level. That's her sitting just wonderfully there behind them at the moment, the real threat to them. But to the Irish woman that's staying with the pace at the moment, and they went through 1,500 right on 4.30, was that, Brady? Yeah, pretty much spot on. So the pace is doing a great job. I think this is what they want. Like, you want to just get, especially if she's gone, you know, more than half of the race. Like, if you, I think she's going to step off now. Yep, just as I say that. But job well done. So great job by our pacemaker. She's done everything our athletes would have asked for. She set them up for that sub-nine-minute run. And with the quality we have in the front of the field, there's no reason why they won't kick it down. So they move behind that peaking duck stage again <laughs> under the dream on b bridge. It's everything you want here at the on track night of nights, the fifth of this world tour. Absolute pleasure to be here and involved. And at the moment, leading down the front straight, you've got McCann of Ireland, Buckman through next, Skyring on the outside of Thomas, Stella Radford behind them, Hancock Cameron looking terrific, and then Nat Rule, that's our group at the moment of seven. So we're talking about class, and that rule is at the back of a pack of fields. She's run 15.06 before, and she is, well, the last of seven at the moment. Jody McCann leading them around. Stella Radford in the mix. Morty Skyring, as we said, making her way up. But don't sleep on Carly Thomas. We said she'd be dangerous in the last 800 metres. We can't forget about Zoe Buckman. So it is McCann, Skyring, Buckman, Thomas Radford, Jayla Hancock, Cameron, and Natalie Rule. What was that lap there, Brady? Yeah, well, 35 for the 200, and the lap before that was 72 high. So they've kept it on us, which is sometimes a concern when the pacemaker drops out. They've set this up really well to go under nine minutes, and it looks like they're hopefully they've got a bit of a deal of taking a few laps each to keep it on us because McCann is almost acting as the second pacemaker. So, pacemaker. So you're right. So the, for the first time, though, we've seen a little bit of a splinter at the back. Buckman's got some work to do in fifth. Hancock, Cameron and Rule are trying to grab onto her. But the on-athletic team now, it's a bit of a on-athletic sandwich and Stella Radford's right in the middle of that. So it's the Irish woman, Jodie McCann. She's picked up the tempo. She's maintained those 70-second laps. Skyring looks terrific. Carly Thomas is going to be a massive threat if she's there with one lap to go. Stella Radford, gutsy, as it was only a few weeks ago here, she ran 3,000 metres. And right now, Buckman, Hancock, Cameron and Rule have got some work to do, Michael. So it's starting to heat up on the back straight as they go through the party tunnel. And Morty, Morty Skyring. Skyring, we mentioned her at the start of the race. We said she'd be a force. And she just gone bang. She was waiting, waiting, waiting. And who knew she had these afterburners on her? With 600 metres to go. Skyring says, catch me if you can. And Jodie McCann is doing her best to catch Stella Radford and Carly Thomas. Just fading back a little bit. We said Carly Thomas would be one to watch if she's in the mix in the final stages. But Morty Skyring is making it so that she's not in that mix. With one lap to go, the, the crowd starts applauding. Everyone's getting up on their feet. The cheer zone is going off. One lap to go, so Skyring's going to get the bell. How quick can she go? How close will she go to 8.50? The Irish woman McCann moving well. Radford ungainly like always, but it's effective. Next through is obviously, we talked about Carly Thomas. The speed from there won't be enough to run down our winner. 
So only one threat it looks like at the moment. Skyring went with two laps to go. Can the Irish woman McCann get anywhere near her? She goes through the tent, 300 to go down the back straight. The race on for three serious. Thomas and Radford. Nat Rule's gone past Hancock Cameron. 8.59, nine's the PB of Skyring, and she at the moment's going to shatter that. How close, as I said, can she get to something around 8.50? Probably 8.55 is what I reckon we're going to get from here. They go past the stage. They go past the party bridge. The on-tracker Knights crowd on the infield is just raising a glass as Morty Skyring comes down the main straight here at the on-track night of Knights. She's going to take victory. It's going to be another on-athletic win. She's watching the clock. 8.48, 8.55 is on the chance here. Skyring's going to be a winner. On Athletics <laughs> takes it. Pyworks go off. 8.55. Wonderful run, Jody McCann. She'll be right on nine minutes in second. Stella Radford Brave in third. Carly Thomas, Natalie Rule, Jayla Hancock Cameron. But your winner, no doubt about it. Morty Skyring of On Athletics. And that group here in Melbourne is showing the force that they have. Hollingsworth was the first one tonight. And the thumbs up there from Skyring. What a good run there, Brady. Oh, it was fantastic. And the way she made that move, she put in a 34-second uh, 200 to break it apart and then finished in 66. So um, strong, speedy, fast. It's the start of December. So um, it just shows that she's in awesome shape this time of the year. I just love the um, this night is just building and building and building. So three on athletics wins. Um, Oboya. Hollingsworth, and now Skyring. You can just see the media piling in um, at the end of the track. We saw all the um, all the media, all the photographers, all the videographers that, that our podcast star, uh, Hugh Van Kylenberg, brought along. But I think there was even more for Morty Skyring's win just then as she's charging down the home straight. And we talk about team athletics. We saw relays earlier. Who did she run to first? It was Imogen Barrett. So training partner, I imagine even some of these girls. I know some of these crew are living together here in Melbourne. I know um, Zach Faccioni is living with Tess Kersop Cole and, 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 his, and her partner. And this team, look at Mo Craig Mottram's joined him down there now. Head coach, big warm embrace. He's a happy man. It hasn't been easy for Morty Skyring. She came back. She was obviously a college, doing good things in college, but it hadn't quite hit the form she'd hoped. And look at the footage you see in the replay in the screen there. It looks terrific. Really tough, really tough. She guts it out. As you said, Brady, perfectly. It was a 60, it was a 32, 200 that was broke it, but it was a 253 last kilometer. As we're going to go into Mitch Dye, who's got the whole on team Mitch with her. Look at all these on colors as well. This is what we want to see. Morty, 855 to kickstart your year. How are you feeling? I'm so excited. Um, wasn't really sure if the race was going to be like going for time or just trying to win and sort of so happy that I came away with both. Um, was really hoping to run right under nine today. I wasn't sure if it was going to happen, but so stoked it did and just felt really good out there coming off a good block at altitude. So, yeah, really happy with it. You've had an enormous year. You were over in Europe for quite some time. You found yourself in a lot of big races, a really big learning year for you as well as joining OAC, obviously. What's 2023 been like and how significant is it now to dip four seconds under the first time you'd even broke nine minutes this year? Um, yeah, it's been a... Very interesting year, definitely learning a lot, sort of coming from college, always being up there in races to then getting into these pro races and, you know, not really knowing what to do, being at the back and also tactical, all run completely different. So it's definitely a learning experience. I felt a little bit out of my element, but I think it's all really going to pay off coming into next year. And so yes, yeah, good start to the season. So stoked. Well, now you ran this similar event in Vienna, an on-track night. Now it comes down here to Melbourne. How awesome is it to have this in our own backyard? You know, we talk about it for a long time. How can we get something really exciting in Australia? And now it's been brought right here. Yeah, it's so exciting. This is actually my fourth on-track night. So I did one in Paris, Vienna and LA. And this is my favourite because it's home crowd. It's just so good to have so many family and friends out here. And I think it's just so exciting for athletics. I was out here at Zatopec last year. I don't think there were many fans at all. So to see it transition so much in a year is super exciting for the sport. Congratulations, Morty Skyring, 8.55. You'll hardly ever see that on Australian soil. A big round of applause for Morty Skyring. Congratulations.